I am joined now by Clara Santato of Polytechnique Montreal, who has been chosen to deliver the 2018 MRS Communications Lecture. Congratulations on that wonderful you, honor. Gosh. Your talk is titled The Wonderful World of Melanins. Give us an overview of your talk. So, my talk will focus on the interaction between melanin, that is a class of uh, biopigments, really ubiquitous in flora and fauna, mm -hmm. interfaces with uh, um, electrolytes or metals. We aim to uh, propose melanin as a candidate for a more sustainable um, electronics. So in electronics where you uh, use abundant materials, you try to avoid as much as you can toxic uh, um, elements, and you try to take care of the life cycle of the device you're building with. So we try to go uh, with melanin from the selection of the materials to the fabrication of the device, operation of the device and their performance, till what happens when we use this device at the end of uh, its life. Can we, for instance, compost the device or not? Is it easier, this action of composting devices using natural materials or not? These are one of the few important questions. It's very point. fascinating. You see a role for melanin, uh, like energy storage and conversion, water treatment and bioelectronics. Mm. Why is this particular material so useful in these types of applications? Okay, from a strictly speaking scientific point of view, the redox state of melanin and its molecular structure, conjugated molecular structure, make it an interesting candidate for electrochemical as electronic and optoelectronic applications. There is also, we, can, we cannot uh, skip the fact that since the 60s, melanin has fascinated material scientists, the physicists, and somebody could also claim that the discovery of uh, the electrical response of melanin, that is an organic material, maybe also came, is one of the very early report and way of the electrical response possible in organic materials. We all know about the Nobel Prize in Chemistry awarded in 2000 for the discovery of conducting polymers. Maybe melanin contributed to uh, constitute this underpinning that at the end uh, uh, made possible the discovery of conducting polymers. Is there a sustainability benefit to using natural materials like melanin in these processes, do you think? Okay, I would like to answer yes. The truth is that I think it's, uh, it's an object of research. Things are not so trivial in the sense that you have to respect uh, certain standards uh, to uh, declare a certain material biodegradable or compostable. So it's not because a material is biosourced that in itself it's biodegradable or compostable. There are standards that we are trying to respect and in this sense we have a very solid collaboration, an excellent collaboration with the Canadian uh, Research Council, Dr. Denis Rowe. It's an excellent collaboration that aims uh, exactly at establishing, but quantitatively, the, uh, how much these natural materials are really biodegradable or not on a scientific basis. And not just, uh, what I stress is, is not because a material is natural that is automatically uh, compostable or biodegradable. What other natural materials beyond melanin may play a role? Uh, other candidates, uh, well investigated, I should say, in the last 10-15 years, and in this sense one of the leaders is Dr. Irmia Vladu, um, are, for instance, uh, Indigo. The, the, the group in Austria was really uh, one of the pioneers in demonstrating Indigo-based transistors. Indigo is what colors our genes. Uh, so there are kind of uh, several pigments that have been used really in uh, electronic, optoelectronic devices. In my group, apart from uh, melanins, and with melanins I indicate eumelanin, pheomelanin, we are also studying now neuromelanin for biomedical application. We are also investigating materials that come from the waste of the wood industry. Uh, in this moment, uh, in particular with FP Innovation, we are exploring the electrochemical and then the electronic properties of film of tannins. 
Of course, lignins is also important to us, as in northern country of Europe, lignins is uh, well investigated in energy storage application. Being in Canada, for us, I mean, of course, the wood industry is an important one, and we try to add value on the waste of such industry. So, for instance, tannins are what we could call, I mean, polyphenol molecules. They also have a redox uh, activity, at least in principle, interesting for our application, and so there are a few graduate students in the group working on this. How did you come to study this particular field of chemistry and material science? Okay, sometimes you think that you plan in your life, sometimes <laughs> accidents, happy accidents uh, happens. Um, first of all, I have a long uh, story, love story with organic electronics and when you really start to work in this field, you also go back on the early stages of the research in this field and melanin since the 60s, we were saying, uh, it has been investigated, so especially in Australia, for its uh, uh, electrical, really intriguing electrical response. Then it happened that uh, uh, a colleague, that is uh, Professor Federico Rosé at INRS in, uh, in Quebec, Canada, uh, is an interme is a colleague that collaborates, was collaborating with me, he was collaborating with a very established group at the University of Queensland in Brisbane, very active, I would say the leading scientist in the field of melanin. Uh, and uh, we read our proposal, we asked the colleagues, can you validate, do you like, would you improve? And we discovered to have this interest in common. And so this uh, amplified also my, my, my interest. Well, congratulations yes. on being chosen to deliver the lecture. Quite an honor. Clara Santaro, we appreciate it. Thank you very much for the opportunity.